this is a Mazda RX-7. 1.3 liters of twin rotor fury with a big giant single turbo, custom built to hang right off the side of her. Stuffed inside of the FD chassis, this is definitely one of my favorite cars and one that I have a lot of love for. Today, it gets a custom exhaust. <sighs> you know, I mentioned having a lot of love for this car, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to have enough room in its heart to love me back. Oh well, we're going to get it up in the air and let's get started on it. The biggest complaint with this original, or at least this initial exhaust system that it came in here with, is that it does have a rattling problem where you can see it hidden on the cross member. It is made uh, with at least some sort of ceramic coating on it or some kind of coverage on it, but we do want to tweak the sound just a little bit, and we also need to uh, make it entirely out of stainless steel and uh, maybe kind of change it up to make it easier to remove. So first off, we'll get it out of the way, get this thing back on the ground, and everything needs to be changed over to V-bands, so after we get the hood popped here, I'm going to jump right in, take out the O2 sensor, and we'll get this downpipe out. I'm going to take it out nice and smooth and easy straight out of the top. As soon as it's out, we're going to stick it in the bandsaw, slice off the original two-bolt flange, and get it ready for a B-band. One of the cool things you can actually see about ceramic coating is when you take a grinder or a wire wheel or something to clean it off, it throws these little tiny... Uh, little sparks, little kind of ignites and all the rest of this stuff. Kind of a cool thing. I figured I'd show you that one. But either way, let's get it all completely cleaned off. Also need to clean up the inside of it. And then I'm going to wipe it down extremely well uh, with some alcohol, actually. Normally, you could use acetone or any other type of uh, good pure cleaner. But uh, I actually ran out, so I'm using uh, alcohol. It also mixes a lot better with uh, our solar flux, which we have to actually protect the back side of the weld because it's all stainless steel. Mix up some solar flux, throw it back on there, and uh, get it ready for uh, for welding. Now, if you're not familiar with working with reactive metals such as stainless, I've got a great video on that. You should definitely check it out. So today I'm using the HTP Invertig 221, which is a nice AC-DC portable machine. Uh, we've been using it for you know, probably since about November or so, and uh, running it in the classes and all the rest of the stuff. Fantastic machine. Look forward to my review coming up pretty soon here. So we're going to get all this welded up here. All these V-bands on, nice, tight, dialed-in, accurate welds. Slap it back in the car ever so gently. We'll get it lined back up and get it up in the air. Now, virtually every builder's kit is going to include what we call known degrees, as in 45, 90, and 180 degrees. They also usually have some straight sections in them. But I typically like to run in order starting with 45 degrees, then use the 90s, then use the 180s. Now you don't have to do it that way, but the reason why I do it is because those offer the least amount of transition, which is what we want for maximum flow. So as I hold this 45 up here, you notice that we're going to need to go around the section in the floor pan, but we don't necessarily need all 45 degrees to do that. In fact, if I cut it in half and flip one side of it over, we have a 22 and a half degree transition in each direction, which is nice and shallow and will maximize our flow. We also need to offset that bend, or we need to kick it upward and get it into the actual tunnel, and I'll show you about how much that looks like and how we're going to work all that in just a second. But first, let's get this cut down and let's get it set up. One of the easiest ways to do this and set up and make sure that you have the correct degree is to center your piece, which you can measure all the way across the top and actually center the blade down the middle of it. And to find your angle, you can usually use some sort of an angle finder or something like that, like the one I have here. And as soon as you have it set up at the correct degrees, which we just want to cut this one in half for 22 and a half degrees on each side, stick it in here, slice it right down the middle, and we're good to go. Now I'm going to take one end and I'm going to stick it into that V-band, just get it nice and kind of tight fit there, because these are actually really good V-bands and they seem to hold, huh? <laughs> which is kind of rare. But either way, I'm going to take the other piece and uh, we're going to draw a line here representing the floor. 
Now, the idea is to rotate this or to offset it. So if we rotate it upward as an assembly, as I'm holding it here, you notice that we actually have a lift in it. We actually go up into the tunnel, which is exactly what we need. So as soon as I have it set up correctly, I'm gonna put a mark on here and we'll get to uh, prepping and tacking all this together. Preparation is nothing more than hitting it with a flap disc to get all the burrs off of it, and we're going to give it a good solid wipe down here with some alcohol as well. Both sides needed to go through this, and of course I'm going to make sure that uh, both sides get their solar flux on the back side of that weld. Now, always do this, and always make sure that you prepare it just right, because if you forget to put, say, like some solar flux or something on there, it's kind of game over. I mean, you're not going to be able to, usually you're not going to be able to go back in there and actually put some in in case you forgot. So. As soon as we have it all set up, throw some tacks on here, give it a good wipe down again. Preparation is key to making sure that we get a good solid weld. I'm going to weld it all up. I'm also going to weld the V-band on, which just means that we have to run a nice super tight arc. I think I did no more than about 70 to 75 amps, but you can see the bead. Nice clean, no real color on it. And if you look on the inside of it here, you can actually see how the solar flux does its job. a nice good full solid penetration to it. Now you can actually see the offset as we stick it back up here into the car. So in order to run this we're obviously going to need some sort of a straight section but at the same time I also need to think of where it needs to come out. We need to clear this cross member which means it needs to be up still in the tunnel. We also have to clear this cross member which means it has to come down out of it. If we sent 22 and a half degrees up, we can assume that 22 and a half degrees back down would be sufficient. So I'm just going to hold the tape measure up here, stick the elbow roughly in the place that I need it to be, measure the distance in between, and then we'll cut off a straight section. Now, in all honesty, there's no reason to mark a straight section like that, but Hey, whatever, I did it anyway. It certainly isn't going to hurt anything. So after we get all this uh, back out of the car, I'm just going to tack it up for right now. I'm confident that the placement is correct and everything is good, but just a tack weld in case I have to change anything up later. I'm going to wait to weld it. Now I went back and I cut the other 45 that I had out of my builder's kit in half for another 22 and a half degree transition on each side and we have a bullet resonator that we got to throw inside of this thing. The best placement I found was actually right there in between the diff. It was nice and tucked in there, everything was good to go. So I'm going to grab it all as an assembly. Both of my uh, transitions of 22 and a half degrees are on there and I'm going to put a lot of force on this so I can mark our clocking reference to make it drop down from the straight section. And watch this. Boom! One handed skills. Alright, so now we're going to go back, make sure that we prep both sides of this, get the other V-band on there because this is where I want it to actually release, is uh, right before that bullet resonator. It's going to make it a lot easier for removal, basically an axle back section that will, that will come off of there nice and easy like, so that's probably the best place for that V-band to go. So I'm going to get this set on the transition, and as soon as all of that's welded up, I'm going to line up my reference marks once again, get it all tacked on here, followed by a full weld. Now, fun fact here, I actually uh, did this entire exhaust in one day, shooting it, filming it, the whole works, and uh, unfortunately some of my weld shots suffered from it, but, you know, either way, you can see what's going on at least. Either way, we get it all back up on here and uh, get that V-band in. I'm going to give it a quick wipe down, and of course we're going to get the V-band installed on the opposite side, on the outlet now. Throw one of our elbows in there, and I'm going to make sure that this little bullet resonator gets attached, and it fits up there right where it needs to be. And as soon as it is, I'm going to trace around the overlap of that slip fit, just to make sure that it goes up and it gets clocked perfect where it needs to be. Then I'm going to go ahead and weld the V-band on here, and after that's done, we'll uh, weld the uh, actual resonator onto the uh, tube assembly itself. As soon as it's tacked on here, there's this one very important thing. As soon as you tack it on there, you got to make sure that you actually get the old marks off of there from the marker. Because you don't really want those going into your weld. It actually, believe it or not, floats up there. And if you leave a permanent marker that did not get burned off on there, if you leave it on, it's actually going to stay on there. And there's almost nothing that takes it off of there. So make sure that your, your marks are very clean and removed from the actual metal before you get it all done. Now, as soon as I get all this back on here, I'm going to give it a little wiggle, shake, make sure everything's good. Then I'm going to grab a hold of a 90 because I'm out of 45s. And I'm going to stick that 90 in there. And, of course, I'm going to grab a hold of the exit piece. 
Now the request was to actually kick this kind of upward, outward, and at a slant, or at an angle. And I'm going to do my best to oblige and uh, make it uh, happen that way. So this is really nothing more than looking at it and eyeballing it. And this is, you know, for some people this may be very hard to swallow here and be like, wait a minute, you didn't measure it, you just eyeballed it? Well, believe it or not, a good educated guess will get you pretty far. There technically is no right or wrong to it as long as the result is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a hold of just a straight section here. Um, this is also just, you know, it was left over on the cut pile. And I'm going to get it measured up, marked up here, and I'm going to kind of work with the gap that I have here. So I was running a little bit short on time on this video and I was starting to lose light. So you can assume that I already tacked it up there and we're going to go ahead and grab the other side of that 90 that I cut down. And I'm going to start with getting the angle corrected uh, to match the exhaust tip or where the exit is. And first I'm going to line it up there directly underneath it and I'm going to kind of trace the angle that needs to go to cut across and actually butt up there correctly. And as soon as I get that on there, or I get it traced out, I'm going to get it cut down, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut it down to length. After we have all of this kind of lined up right where it needs to be, very carefully hold it up in place, and then I'll get it marked out for length and ready to be cut down. Now notice one thing I have here, if you look carefully, there is a rag placed in between the exhaust tip and the actual body of the car. Now a good rag folded over three, four times will give you adequate space and uh, help make sure that you have enough wiggle room to get in there, it's just a nice little trick. Now I'm going to make sure that I have this lined up correctly and clocked correctly and I'm going to take my dear sweet time making sure that everything lines up and marks out where it needs to be. That's very, very important because if you weld all this up here, and it doesn't line up, it's kind of game over. You gotta take it all apart, redo every bit of it. Now, there is one thing I definitely want to address on this one as I weld all of this up. You've noticed the times that I've actually taken the exhaust off the car, then stuck it back on the car, only to weld it once, or only to weld one elbow or one section on there. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it like that. The reason I do that is for that perfect fitment. I want that exhaust to be nice, tight, tucked, everything good to go. The problem with uh, welding, especially stainless steel or tubing or round material, is distortion gets pretty high. You actually uh, end up with it, uh, you know, if you have it lined up one way and you have a really tight section, you'll actually find that it uh, pulls or distorts or moves one way versus the other. And that's not necessarily something that you want. So, in order to combat that, I typically take it out and put it back in several times over and over and over again both before and after welding it just to make sure that everything is still fit right where it needs to be doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it that way but at the same time that's what works best for me and if you want the best fit that's what I recommend doing even though it takes a lot longer to do just make sure it's good and uh, fit it as many times as you have to So with the welding all complete, it's time to make some hangers. I'm just feeding some uh, 3-8 stainless steel rod into the saw. I'm going to slice up some sections here. And to uh, bend them into hangers, just take one section of it, smack it in there, uh, about 45 degrees or so. Just enough to put a little bit of a hook on the end of it, make it not slip out easily. And then smack the other one down at about 90 degrees. And this is roughly what the hook looks like. Yes, it is offset at the top, and I'll show you why. It's actually very rare that I ever hang an exhaust hanger straight down or uh, vertically or perpendicular to the chassis. I usually angle them and pull with a little bit of tension on there to make sure that the exhaust stays under tension. This prevents it from moving so much. So if I pull both of these in the same direction, or if I pull two in the opposite direction, uh, it will be in there nice and tight and it won't move around and rattle and bump into stuff and, you know, pretty much make the the person you built it for regret going to you because it's just rattling on down the road. That kind of sucks. So with our last piece fit in here, make sure that it gets all welded up. I'm going to give it a good smacking around just to make sure everything's good. No rattles, no problems. Put it back on the ground and let's listen to this thing fire up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, what's actually really crazy about that exhaust is I actually had to put the camera way out in the parking lot and turn the microphone down because that thing was ridiculously loud. But had to make sure that you could actually hear it and uh, it wouldn't clip the microphone. So uh, either way, that's pretty much how it works. Now, do me a favor. I know you probably don't really agree with the sound that the car made or maybe you want to say that it's... Well, you know, it doesn't matter what really what you want to say. Just please try not to slander my client's car in the comments down below. I know you may not agree with it, but if you do completely disagree and you want a totally different sound, just bring me your car and I'll make it sound different. Your car. Either way, I want to thank you guys for watching as always. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fabrication Series YouTube channel for more really awesome content. And I'll see you guys on the next episode.